put Oreo in there. So, uh, yes, yeah, so Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you've got to respect that. And, you know, fortunately in practice we've seen a few wrecks. Uh, a really pretty good hard hit to the wall yesterday. Uh, J.R. Hillebrand hit the, scuffed the wall. Both drivers were able to get out okay. Those were the really only times we hit the wall. Uh, and I was concerned, especially with this new aero kit, Matt, that we would start seeing some, some cars airborne, especially getting into traffic. I was a little concerned that we would see a lot more uh, carnage, if you will, like we're used to seeing in practice at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We only saw two cars. So today uh, we got people out there trying to, to get into the field of 30. Now, if you're if you're a crew chief, if you're a team owner, it sounds real simple. Tell your driver go out there, go, run your run your uh, your your laps, be done, and let's get back in. Let's get back in the garage and let's get ready uh, for the field of 33 for qualifying tomorrow. However, however, we know things happen. We know things happen, and if you're a crew chief and you're talking to your drivers. You got to protect that race car, not not just from the financial aspect of it, but this is it. If, if you don't have a backup car, or if, or if you if 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 you screw this up today, you could really screw screw your team. Not that anybody would do that intentionally. By no means am I saying that, Matt. But if you're the crew chief, if you're the owner, what are you telling your drivers to do to protect that race car today? Well. Today, right now, is just keep it easy. But the thing is, though, with, you know, bumping possibilities, you really cannot be conservative. You have to bring your A game, and you need to go for it and try to put the car solidly in the field. Because uh, if we only get one attempt and we get to the end of the line, you're 34th, 35th, it starts raining, you're out of luck. So you've got to find that perfect balance between aggression and control. And whoever does the best, that's probably going to be the guys that not only make the field, but that does it perfectly, is probably going to be your pulse there. So let's talk about our bump bag, if you will. I've got a few. You've got a few. So based on your gridatology, who gets bumped today? I just don't think Davison has enough left after the setback to get him back all the way there. The team's worked overnight. And then uh, Kyle Kaiser, the, you just cannot come here with all brand new stuff and limited experience and expect to be successful here. And I think uh, – for Ricardo Junkos, I think they really need to go back to the drawing board and start thinking, bringing in veterans and people that have been here before and go from that round trying to just try to build Rome uh, without uh, uh, an instruction manual. So I I think I mentioned a few of the ones that I thought would, would be bumped. And, uh, you know, J.R. Hillebrand, unfortunately, good kid. I, I think he just has had a, ba- a streak of bad luck. I don't, I don't think anybody will ever forget it. Can you imagine coming down for the victory of the Indianapolis 500 and crashing? Uh, that, will, that will remain with him forever. And I just don't think he's ever gotten over that. And he's never, ever got back to that plateau at Indianapolis since then. He's had good qualifying runs. It's just he hasn't been able to put it all together. And, of course, when you only run Indy, it doesn't help you. And then when you have the opportunity to make it big, he doesn't follow through with it as he failed to do last year. So that's why he's now in the situation with Breyer. Still think he makes the field solidly today. But, uh, yeah, his chances to win uh, probably are very limited, if uh, that at best, uh, looking forward to next weekend. So the cars are out on the track, uh, and uh, so I, I think we've got about another 20 minutes of practice, uh, I believe. You're out there. Uh, Matt, what are you seeing? What's going on at the track right now as we get ready to, to uh, uh, start uh, bump day at 11 o'clock? Eventually here we'll start seeing cars getting into line in the qualifying line area. Uh, we'll talk about that stuff as obviously on Facebook and Twitter uh, when we get a chance when you get down here with me. But I think we should be seeing cars going through final inspection right now, and once they do that, they will head out to the qualifying line, and we will get ready for qualifications coming up at 11 o'clock. Well, so far the fastest in session, the best lap, a 229.505, uh, is Elio Castanevas and his uh, number three Pennzoil. Uh, Rick, I always call yeah, it the Rick Mears Yellow there Submarine. For a second. Let me stop you there for a second. How many of those cars? How many cars ran in the morning warm up today? Uh, 11, maybe 10. Yeah. That's only a third of the field that tells you you're not going to learn anything, but it's cool. It's warming up now. So if you're trying to balance the car based on that, uh, you're not going to be successful. And that's why I think you saw a major only 11 cars, uh, attempt qualification. The only guy that you were sawing 
that were in practice today are guys that are in danger of being bumped. I think the other guys that you didn't see are guys feeling confident that they're in a good position to make the field. Well, if I'm Simon Pettijohn and I'm looking at uh, just an overall speed in practice right now, uh, 137.494, that is not going to cut it. <laughs> There's something yeah, going on just, there. Yeah, just he uh, just did an installation lap, and they brought it back in. So, essentially, it's just uh, apparently they must have made some major change to it mechanically that they caught during a, the engine heat test in the garage there, and they just brought it out there just to make sure that that's been taken care of. Because the last thing you want to do is have to abort your qualifying run because – if the field runs through and you don't get back out, you are you lose that guaranteed attempt, and it rains, and they get through the field, he's out of luck. So that's right now, making sure that thing was still working okay, that was their big check right there. And I think that's why they went out there, just to do that one check to make sure everything's okay. When he does floor it, there's not a problem. Well, we've got about uh, 20 minutes and some change left in practice, and then, of course, 11 o'clock uh, is uh, – it's it's all for the gusto, and I'll be joining uh, Matthew Embry out there at the track, uh, and we'll be doing our live tweets. So uh, make sure you follow us at T Ballots and uh, look for our live tweets uh, throughout the day. And uh, we'll be certainly keeping you updated on Twitter as well as uh, Matthew's uh, Twitter page as well, and uh, we'll let you know what happens to the bump. Day. So we've about uh, wrapped up our bump day portion of it. We're going to get into some uh, gambling talk here in just a minute. I know that you uh, work for Sports Talk Show uh, Station up in Mishawaka. Uh, talk with us a little bit about what you guys are talking about, uh, gambling now legal in the United States. I think right now the big thing is uh, if it involves NCAA teams, how it's going to be enforced and what possible violations might be involved. I think that's the biggest thing and how it may affect Notre Dame. So that's still unclear as to – what the NCAA will do if they catch that involving uh, college legions, if they're still going to crack down on that and try to have that as a deterrent. Well, see, I guess, you know, that would be my thing. If, if you if retroactively look at things and say it was really, according to the Supreme Court, uh, and we're going to move and BS Sports Show is going to be joining us here about 1030, our, our, our gambling expert, but he, he's going to help us break it down and make sense of the law. But the way I understand it is if something – if the Supreme Court says something is legal that has been deemed illegal, that retroactive period, there are things that come to play that say, in fact, there were no laws broken. Uh, Rick, if you want to jump in here, you, you certainly can. Uh, and we're going to wrap up this segment here in just a moment. But uh, what, what do you think, uh, speaking with the about the NCAA, I know you, you follow Notre Dame quite a bit. Um, retroactively, uh, do, do you think any of these laws were even broken? Well, I, it, it's tough to say because uh, I think what Matt might be talking about is, is – uh, are you talking about student and player involvement? Yeah, the, uh, that hurts yes. eligibility. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's really tough to say. Now, schools will have their own guidelines uh, and their own rules. It's like when they legalize marijuana, just because it's legal in Colorado doesn't mean you can show up to work in Colorado <laughs> and not get fired if you're high. You know, so it, <laughs> That's right. it, it falls in uh, along those lines. Uh, if students were involved and, and players were involved, you know, over the past several years or how far back you want to take it retroactively uh they probably did you know according to school laws but uh, as far as national laws i i I couldn't say so we'll have to see what the uh, the ruling is going to be i know it's legal now but really what does that mean and i'm just interested to to hear what mo say here a little bit yeah i think we're, we're here in indiana and i think we're at least two to three years out before it's actually going to be implemented as a, as a law uh, or be illegal here in the state of Indiana. That is so. Uh, so we'll get into that here coming up in our in, at the bottom of the hour with Mo from the BS Sports Show. This has been our Bump Day edition, our Bump Day special. Matthew, uh, give us some last words of wisdom. You're out there at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Talk with us a little bit for a few minutes here about. What we're looking at today, tomorrow, qualifying. How do they qualify? What do they look for to qualify? Break down the qualifying process for the Indianapolis 500. I think right now you look at the situation, assuming we get through the line completely without any interruptions, then it begins where you could go back in. You can withdraw your time and get the priority. I'll be very curious to see how aggressive teams get uh, with the weather possibly in play. 
But I think those drivers that are very close to that cut line are going to be very nervous. Uh, if weather starts to come back, you may see a mass rush to the line in order to get another attempt to see if they can get back in, if that allots itself uh, later today. Well, the sun is out. I'm looking outside the studio windows right now, and the sun appears to be coming out. Don't and if jinx we look it, Tom. I'm just kinda... Tom, don't jinx it. <laughs> That's what I was say. So I won't, I won't, don't do I won't it. go into – Don't do you know, it. I won't – <laughs> you know what? I it's Indianapolis. It, God and Mother Nature love Indianapolis. So uh, uh yeah, we're not going to piss them off. We're not going to piss them off. Matthew Embry out at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, uh the best place in the world to be and for race fans like us, it's Christmas time and Matthew, we'll let you go. Where can people find your work and your masterpieces? I'll catch up with you in the track up here at the track in about an hour or so. I should be uh, making my way through traffic and Getting parked and getting up to the media center, where I'll catch up with you, and then uh, we'll we'll do some walk arounds the track and so forth, uh, and 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 do our stuff out there. Uh, but where can people find yeah, the again, masterpieces, sir? Yep, popularopenwheel dot com, and then of course M A T T E M B U I Y on Twitter. May not be posting as much as Tom is, but I may get a few things in if there's any big moments that happen along the way. So we'll see how things go. Uh, we'll get the sunscreen green laddered up here because it's going to be hot, folks, out there. So you might want to, don't want to get burned out here. And uh, remember, just have the rain gear just in case it does open up because uh, it's still a lot of unpredictability as to how the weather could play out. But uh, it's going to be a fun time. And if you're not down here, you need to get down here as soon as you can because we're about ready to qualify. That's right. Get to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I'm going to be headed out there in about 30 minutes. I'm going to be getting off the air and getting in my car and heading down there. Matt, we'll catch up with you then. Not a problem. I'll save a seat for you. All right, buddy. We'll talk to you soon. Matthew Embry at Popular Open Wheel Now, our official IndyCar contributor, live at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Myself and Rick Rickon and Mo from the BS Sports Show will be back for the last half hour. We're going to be talking gambling, and you can bet on that right here on the Balance Radio Network. Bobby, you're here again. Yeah, my doctor told me to reduce stress at work, so I come to Buffalo Wild Wings to eat lunch and watch sports. I get to pick one of seven entrees, like sandwiches and salads, plus one of seven sides. Well, I like sides. It's so affordable, I can finally take a vacation. Where are you going to go? Here, Tim, here. Introducing the new Beat Up Fast Break Lunch Menu, starting at a new low price. Dine-in or order takeout weekdays between 11 and 2. Participation and availability may vary. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, sports. It's double trouble, double the fun. At African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio, see the largest antelope on Earth, the giant ewa, and the ugliest creature on Earth, the African warthog. There's so much to see and do, including the Midwest's only drive through safari. See the animals. See live educational shows. Feel the excitement. Have your picture taken with a python or cockatoo. Feel the adventure. Shop the Simba Lodge gift shop with items available from around the globe. Visit the snack bar or picnic facilities. Enjoy a pony or camel ride. Or cheer your favorite porker on to victory in the famous Pork Chop Down. Bring your family to see the rare and exotic animals at African Safari Wildlife Park in Port Clinton, Ohio. Just take Route 2 to the Route 53 North exit and follow the sign. Only 17 miles west of Cedar Point via Route 6. Open every day, rain or shine. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be confusing. Like Swedish techno confusing. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Dance with me, purple cow. Bark, bark, meow, meow. Ooh, you lovely cow. Geico makes it easy. With 24-7 access, all you have to do is go to Geico.com and you can save money on car insurance. It just makes sense. Unlike, you know. Dance with me, purple cow. I like your mood. When you don't go to Geico.com, car insurance can be hard. Like early 90s heavy metal hard. I'm yelling and screaming and I'm loud. Roar. Geico makes it easy. You can review and update your policy or report a claim on Geico.com or the Geico mobile app. Because shouldn't we all have a little less stress in our lives? 